Hi everybody. <coughs> so I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but as you can tell from my uh, Marge Simpson voice, my voice has been going in and out. <laughs> I just can't get a break with my health lately. It's very frustrating. But I got some water here, so hopefully I can get through this video. Um, I'm going to try to make this as non-boring as possible, but <clears throat> it's a lot of information and it's it's it, it may run on. I apologize. So what I'm going to be doing is the votary section of walking through the House of Isis, and I'm going to be doing an overview. <clears throat> There's way too much information. If I did it ever, if I read it verbatim, it would take me quite a bit of time and way more time than y'all want to sit there for and um, that YouTube would want me to even upload. So I'm working in the book Isis Magic <clears throat> Cultivating a Relationship with the Goddess of 10,000 Names. Now this book is out of print. It's printed 2001. I saw it online for like two to four hundred dollars something ridiculous but somebody did tell me they saw it for like fifty. 50 is a lot for a book, but it is an out-of-print book, and it's a phenomenal book. It's definitely worth the money. I mean, if you can find it cheaper, definitely go that way. But if if you're if you if your goddess is Isis and oh, I'm so sorry, and you want to build a, a stronger connection to her, even if you don't want to go through um, all of the phases or steps to go through the House of Isis, it's still a really good book. So, <clears throat> the book has several chapters, <clears throat> and the chapter that we're going to be working in, or I'm going to be talking about, is sort of 10, 11. 10 is, it kind of gives you, it says entering the house of Isis, worshiping Isis, growing in her presence, the magic of Isis, the art of ritual, and the house of Isis. So, it's sort of an overview of what all that entails, the house of Isis. The one we're going to be working in is becoming a votary of Isis. And let me get to that section. Section. Like I said, holy moly, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna be doing an overview. <clears throat> I might go in slight more depth with some things than others. So becoming a votary of Isis. First of all, votary is a devotee. So Essentially, as a, as a votary, you're devoting a certain amount of time <clears throat> of your spiritual work that you do in general, specifically to Isis. Now, even for a follower of Isis, it's going to be a little bit more cumbersome than you might be used to, unless you only use Isis as your main goddess and you never work with any other gods or goddesses. <coughs> I'm so sorry this this may not work. I don't know. <clears throat> now, each one of these phases that you go through is basically vot votary to high priestess. <clears throat> is very much stepping stones of uh, building a relationship. Even one that you would build in, in just in general. If you meet somebody and you're dating them and you're getting to know them. The votary portion would be the getting to know dating kind of period where you're kind of getting to know what they like, what they don't like, their history and all that kind of stuff. So developing an openness to, to Isis. Now some of these things I'm going to read verbatim because the book is so well written. <coughs> There's just no way for me to break it down anymore without ruining the content. So what it says is being open to Isis is a subtle thing. It involves an openness of both mind and of the subtle body, sometimes known as, as aura. Now, unfolding hope is the next little section in this in this uh, <coughs> chapter. And I'm going to read it. It's a very short paragraph. I'm going to read it verbatim. These two types of openness of mind and aura encourage a third openness of spirit. Spiritual openness feels like hope, thus it is said that part of <clears throat> the work of a votary is the unfoldment of hope. The longing of hope opens us to greater possibilities. Hope is a buoyant desire. 
Hope can enlarge the spirit. As a votary, you are urged to encourage hope in yourself and in others. So this is really going to work on you as a person, your connection to ISIS, your connection with your environment. It, it's, it's, a, it's a whole, you know, three, three punch on this one. In each of these sections, you're going to be working on specific skills. And they may be skills that you're already familiar with. A lot of these things are going to be things that, you're, that you are familiar with. It's just going to kind of give it a little twist. It's going to look, make you look at it from a different point of view. Maybe give you some information that you didn't have before. For instance, this one is going to be purification, consecration, and invocation. Holy <sighs> donuts. Okay. Now... I'm going to get up in this chapter to invocation and then I'm going to stop because invocation is another whole video that I'm going to work on at the whole end of this chapter. So let's kind of come back to that. Now, <coughs> what the book says or what it, it, um, it doesn't require it, it suggests that you use a ritual robe for each step of your journey through the House of Isis. So, for instance, use a specific robe, robe for votary. Now, <clears throat> I myself am very frugal, so I will be making my own robe because I can have more power over the, the way it fits, the fabric, and how much it costs. Not everybody has that option. Uh, if you want to use ritual robes that you already have, like I said, it's not a requirement. <clears throat> ritual robes or ritual clothing, a lot of us wear in ritual already. It's something we already practice. It gets us in that mind state, that, that, that place that we need to be to do, uh, to work our magic. So, and some people don't, and that's totally cool. Whatever works for you. Now, it does say if you're going to do a robe for each step you should do a different color and it's of your choosing the color I'm going to be choosing for Votary is going to be white white to me is new beginnings and this is a new beginning to the journey through throughout the house of Isis so that's the color I've chosen now the first ritual that you would come to once you went through all of this other information uh, the backstory of Isis, the Egyptian history, mythology, uh, the Egyptian pantheon, culture, uh, the ancient Egyptian culture. All of that is in the front of this book. So once you get through all that and you get to this particular ritual, it's called Tying the Knot of Isis. And it's sort of like a baptism slash marriage kind of uh, You are taking a vow and you are not sinking yourself in water, but you are making a commitment you are making a devotion to uh, to isis at this particular time so this ritual is the beginning of your relationship so my advice is to go into it once you've read anything everything to go into it fully aware fully i mean we can't predict what's going to come into our lives but at the time that you make this devotion or you're ready to make sure that you have the time to set aside make sure that you are fully prepared to take this on like you would an, an, a class at school that's just my suggestion now during this tying the knot of Isis you're actually going to be physically tying a knot it's called the tet t-e-t -E and if I'm pronouncing that wrong I apologize the tet is um, <clears throat> two inch wide, two yard long uh, cotton or oh, linen fabric. I've chosen this red because it needs to be red. Um, I've ch chosen this. So what I will do is I will show y'all the, the um, diagram of the knot that you'll make so you can kind of see that. So the tet will be your, your, your emblem of your devotion to Isis during this votary section. Now, on the altar, 
I will tell you what they, they suggest that you have, and I'll also give you some information about the altar itself. Now, the altar itself, they suggest that you have it in the center of your temple space. Not everybody has the, the option to have an entire room set aside for their spiritual space. I completely understand that. It's only until now that I've had that, and until I have children, I'll probably have it until I have children and then it's over. But <clears throat> my suggestion is if you do not have an entire space, if you have a table that you use as your altar, I would suggest suggest that you can clean it completely off because it, 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 it tells you that everything that you need for the ceremony should only be on your altar. I also suggest that if you are using a table, if you're using any items that you normally use in a ritual or that have sat out, completely clean them top to bottom. If you're using a table, clean the bottom of the table, clean the legs of the table. Purification it, it, it was a, a huge factor in ancient Egypt. It is a, it's a huge factor. And the reason why I say that it is it, it's, it's said several times in this book. It's a huge factor in walking through the house of Isis and, and really taking on the persona of the ancient e Egyptians and how they did their magic. Because you really want to get into that space if you can. Now the tools you'll need on your ceremonial ceremonial altar will be a cup with water, censer, incense, you'll need your tet, uh, pre-knotted of course, uh, you'll need one fresh white flower, matches or a lighter, whatever you choose. Holy boy, I'm so sorry. Try to edit that out. You'll need a candle of, of the color you're choosing that you feel represents you. For instance, me, I'm green is my color, so I would have a green candle. Whatever color that you resonate with spiritually because some people might say well orange is my favorite color but when it comes to spirituality I really resonate with purple whatever whatever you feel is it encompass encompasses you because this is a candle that's going to re represent you you're also going to need three tokens you're going to need <clears throat> one that represents the desire of your heart Another to represent the strength of your spirit. And the third to represent the mystery of your soul. These are all in relationship to your work with Isis. So <coughs> you have to pick them in, in that thought process. Now, you also need to be able to verbalize why you chose these particular tokens. <coughs> because they will be part of your, your um, ritual. You'll need to put them into your ritual. Now, the ritual, I'm, I'm going to kind of give you sections of what it entails, but I can't go through every word it says because it's, it's pretty lengthy. You'll have your opening invocation and your purification and consecration section. You have your vow, which is about two pages long. You'll have your tying the knot of Isis, which is when you will do this, and your closing. Now, I'm going to show you the diagram right now for the tet, so you can see it. All right. Another thing you'll learn in each section that you go through are postures and gestures, which to me are breathing techniques and sort of Isis yoga. So in this particular one, right after the ritual, the uh, votary dedication, if you will, ritual, is the Isis wings and breath of Isis, or the wings and breath of Isis. And basically there are some breathing techniques that you will implement in this particular posture, but how it goes is you will put your palms like this with them facing up and you will put them right below, sort of cradling your, you know, by your abdomen, sort of in a cradle. What you'll do is you'll breathe in and you will lift your arms to the side, slightly above your head with your palms facing up. 
then you will bring them down into the same pose. And like I said, there are breathing techniques to this, but this is an overview. Okay, purification and consecration. Like I said, purification was a huge part of Egyptian culture in general, but even more so for the spiritual part of the Egyptians' life. <coughs> Which, the Egyptians were so spiritual, it, all, it was so intertwined, it's hard to differentiate. But, the, the ancient Egyptians were very, very clean people. Very, very clean people. And anybody who was a higher spiritual hier um, hierarchy, priests, and that sort of thing, they literally would shave their entire body hair every three days. They, sh they shower or they ba bathed twice during the day, twice during the night. They were completely and utterly physically clean. They never wanted to go before the gods with any kind of filth, any kind of fleas, any kind of anything. It was very sacrilegious to them. So it was very important to them with their connection to, to the gods to be in the purest state that they could be. Now, purification to the ancient Egyptians and even to people today is not always just a physical thing, meaning you're outside physical. People abstain from sex, they abstain from foods by fasting, they give up certain types of activities, uh, foods, beverages, whatever. There are a lot of sacrifices to, that you make to purify your spirit, to pu purify your body, to purify your soul. And these are things that the ancient Egyptians did when they would go, before they would go into a ritual state. So purification is to kick out any, anything that we do not want in our self, in our tools, in our space <clears throat> before going into ritual. Consecrating is the drawing in of what we want. What we want to empower in ourselves, in our items, or in our space going into ritual. The energy, the way that they're energized help us with our magic. And it was so for the ancient Egyptians as well. Now there is a ritual in here uh, for purification and consecration by identification. <laughs> and um, it, it's not lengthy, but it, it's, it's, it's a pretty good one. <clears throat> the next thing is the Lotus Pool Rite. Now this is sort of a ritual slash guided meditation. And the meditations in here are fantastic. And it could be that I have an affinity for ancient Egypt and Isis. But to me, really, the book is so beautifully written. It's colorful. It puts you right in that place. The first ritual or meditation basically starts out in the desert in front of this beautiful temple of Isis and, and it, it walks you through walking into it, connecting with Isis, communicating with her and so forth. It's, it's very beautifully done. They do say in here that <clears throat> you can either have somebody read it to you or you can tape your voice and, ha and, and play it back to, to guide you through the meditation. <clears throat> Myself, I would probably have to do the tape. I would get way too distracted with somebody in the room, but if you can do it with somebody in the room, that would be fantastic too. The, I believe last thing, yeah, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is making Nile water. Now, Nile water in this particular sense is used as holy water. Now, the Nile River was, and it, and it still is, the very lifeblood of Egypt. <clears throat> the ebb and flow of the Nile would would you know bring drought, but when the wa when the water would come back in from the Nile, it would bring so many nutrients that it would just fertilize the land and and make it such an abundant place. That's why the Nile is, has attributes of fertility, abundance, and renewal. So the Nile water you make will be that in the, in the in the same vein of that sort of holy water <clears throat> what you'll need is water obtained from a river or other freshwater source nearest to you and boiled 
if not if no natural fresh water is available use distilled water or tap water you're gonna need lotus petals now Lotus petals, at least for me, are not the easiest to come by. So if you can't find a lotus petal, you can use flower petals from the same family, which would be lilies. You're also going to need cinnamon sticks broken up. Now, <clears throat> these are the items you'll need to make the, uh, the, um, the Nile water. If I have time, I will try to put you know the process of making the Nile water you may be able to find it online and if I can find it online I'll put the link below all right so the next section is invocation and there's a lot of invocations in here and more information to cover so I'm gonna stop there so I can take a lot of a lot more notes I don't want to drag this video on and on I've already done one and it was a half hour long and yeah that was way too long so Anyways, I hope I didn't go too fast. I, I wanted to give you all as much information as I could to kind of perk your interest and hopefully people can, uh, you know, find this book and I would love for the, the people to re, um, reprint it because I think it's a phenomenal resource for anybody who follows Isis or, or um, wants to get to know her uh, better. Anyways, so that's it. I'm rambling. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, everybody, for your subscriptions. You freaking rock. I'm so stoked. I am so excited for all the people that have subscribed to my channel. And stay tuned for the next video. I'll probably do it tomorrow. I am going to be posting an in bulk video of my in bulk altar. And I'll try to get one more in today, but it is kind of late, so I probably will do more tomorrow. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, blessed be. Bye.